Hello folks, it's Miss Shanahan and I'm back again with another video. Today we're going to do two things. First we're going to read the next chapter of our book Tuck Everlasting and find out what is going on with this Tuck family. Secondly, we're going to learn how to use our online library to read books. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that if you're watching this video, you have already completed the chapter six or characterization video. If not, uh, go ahead and hit the previous button right here in Canvas, finish that, then come back. So this video comes with some pretty, pretty good news which is that using an app called Sora, which we're going to practice today, you can still check out books and just like it's a library, but read them on your computer. And Sora even has some super cool reading tools that don't even exist in, in regular books, in paper books. So super exciting news coming for you today. Our objective in this video is I can learn how to use our online book on Sora by reading chapter seven of Tuck Everlasting with my teacher. That's me. So this is important because you can still check out books even though we are out of school or even as long as we are out of school. I'll just note that as we read today, I'll show you some tools in Sora. And then at the very end of this video, after we finish chapter seven, you will, um, see a tutorial for how to log on using Clever. So stay tuned for the log on instructions at the end of this video. So on our home screen of Sora, you will see the assignments area and you'll find Tuck Everlasting right here in assignments. So I'll click that and then I'm gonna click open book. Now, since I've opened this already, I have the book already open to chapter seven. If I want, if I'm good to go with chapter seven, I'll click my screen and that um, bar will go away. If I click it again, maybe I wanna move ahead or move backward. I'm gonna drag this little circle across the green line and back again. Maybe I wanna go back to the beginning. There I am at the cover, right? So let me take myself back to chapter seven. And then in order to make this bar kind of go away so I can read, I'm just going to click the screen. All right. So real quick, let's remind ourselves what had happened in chapter six. Awesome. Let's go ahead and read chapter seven. It was the strangest story Winnie had ever heard. She soon suspected that they had never told it before, except to each other, that she was their first real audience, for they gathered around her like children at their mother's knee, each trying to claim her attention, and sometimes they all talked at once and interrupt, interrupted each other with their eagerness. So let's say I'm a student, right, and I'm reading and I've come across this word eagerness, and I'm like, oof, what is that word? So using Sora, what I can do is hold down on that word and I'll click define. And down here at the bottom, I can see, okay, eagerness is enthusiasm to do or to have something or keenness. Cool. So I've defined that. I can also see the synonyms here or words that mean the same thing. Let's keep going. 87 years before, the Tucks had come from a long way to the east, looking for a place to settle. In those days, the wood was not a wood. It was a forest, just as her grandmother had said, a forest that went on and on and on. They had thought they would start a farm as soon as they came to the end of the trees. But the trees never seemed to end. When they came to the part that was now the wood and turned from the trail to find a camping place, they happened on the spring. It was real nice, said Jessie. So I've come to a point where I need to turn the page. 
All I'm going to do is move my cursor over to the right side and click. Keep reading, said Jesse with a sigh. It looked just the way it does now. A clearing, lots of sunshine, that big tree with all those knobby roots. We stopped, and everyone took a drink, even the horse. No, said May. The cat didn't drink. That's important. Yes, said Miles. Don't leave that out. We all had a drink except for the cat. Well, anyway, Jesse went on, the water tasted sort of strange, but we camped there overnight, and Pa carved a tea on the tree trunk to mark where we'd been. And then we went on. They had come out of the forest at last, many miles to the west, had found a thinly populated valley, had started their farm. So I just read that word populated. And maybe I'm even though I've read the context clues, I'm still not sure exactly what that word populated means. So what do you think I'll do? Yep. So if I highlight it and click define. Populate means form the population of. And when I go down here to find some synonyms, there are plenty that I can see if I recognize. We put up a house for Ma and Pa, said Miles, and a little shack for Jesse and me. We figured we'd be starting our families of our own pretty soon and would want our own houses. That was the first time we figured something was... That was the first time we figured there was something peculiar, said May. Jesse fell out of a tree. I was way up in the middle, Jesse interrupted, trying to saw off some of the big branches before we cut her down. I lost my balance and I fell. He landed plumb on his head, said May with a shudder. We thought for sure he'd broke his neck, but come to find out, it didn't hurt him a bit. Not long after, Miles went on, some hunters came by one day at sunset. The horse was out grazing by some trees, and they shot him. Mistook him for a deer, they said. Can you fancy that? But the thing is, they didn't kill him. The bullet went right on through him, and didn't hardly even leave a mark. Then Pa got a snake bite, and Jesse ate the poisoned toadstools. And I cut myself, said May, remember, slicing bread. But it was the passage of time that worried them most. They had worked the farm, settled down, made friends. But after ten years, then twenty, they had to face the fact that there was something terribly wrong. None of them was getting any older. So if I'm a student and my teacher, Miss Shanahan, just asked me to go back and identify some three-star relevant evidence that supports my answer, it's really going to help me out if I know how to highlight. So let me go back into the text where we see that after, but after 10 years, after 10 years, then 20, they had to face the fact that something was terribly wrong. None of them was getting any older. So just like that, I can highlight, click highlight, my three star evidence. I can even change the color if I'd like in order to remind myself what my evidence is. All right, let's keep reading. I was more than 40 by then, said Miles sadly. I was married, I had two children. But from the look of me, I was still 22. My wife, she finally made up her mind, and I'd sold my soul to the devil. She left me. She went away, and she took the children with her. I'm glad I never got married, Jessie put in. It was the same with our friends, said May. They'd come to pull back from us. There was talk about witchcraft, black magic. Well, you can't hardly blame them, but finally we had to leave the farm. We didn't know where to go. We started back the way we, and I'm turning the page, right, just by clicking on the right side. We started back the way we come, just wandering. We was like gypsies. When we got this far, it had changed, of course. A lot of the trees was gone. There was people, and tree grap, it was a new village. The road was here, but in those days, it was mostly just a cow path. 
We went on into what was left of the wood to make a camp. And when we got to the clearing and the tree and the spring, we remembered it from before. It hadn't changed no more than we had, said Miles, and that was how we found out. Pod carved a T on the tree, remember, twenty years before. But the T was just where it had been when he'd done it. That tree hadn't grown one whit in all that time. It was exactly the same, and the tea he'd carved was just as fresh as if it had just been put there. Then they had remembered drinking the water. They and the horse, but not the cat. The cat had lived a long and happy life on the farm, but had died some ten years before. So they decided at last that the source of their changelessness was the spring. When we come to that conclusion, May went on, Tuck said, that's my husband, Angus Tuck. He said he had to be sure, once and for all. He took his shotgun and he pointed it at himself the best way he could. And before we could stop him, he pulled the trigger. There was a long pause. May's finger, laced together in her lap, twisted with the tension of remembering. At last she said, the shot knocked him down, went into his heart. It had to, the way he aimed, and right on through him. It scarcely even left a mark, just like, you know, like you shot a bullet through water. And he was just the same as if he'd never done it. After that, we went sort of crazy, said Jessie, grinning at the memory. Heck, we was going to live forever. Can you picture what it felt like to find that out? But then we sat down and talked it over, said Miles. We're still talking it over, Jessie added, and we'd figured it'd be very bad if everyone knew about that spring, said May. We'd begun to see what it would mean. She peered at Winnie. Do you understand, child? That water, it stops you right where you are. If you'd had a drink of it today, you'd stay a little girl forever. You'd never grow up, not ever. We don't know how it works, or even why, said Miles. Pa thinks it's something left over from, well, some other plan for the way the world should be, said Jessie. Some plan that didn't work out too good. And so everything was changed, except that spring was passed over, somehow or other. Maybe he's right. I don't know. But you see, Winnie Foster, when I told you before I'm a hundred and four years old, I was telling the truth. But I'm really only seventeen. And so far as I know, I'll stay 17 till the end of the world. All right, I'm going to show you a really quick trick in Sora. If I'm reading and I want to know this word, we'll say world, in another language, I'm going to hold down that word world, click define, and if I scroll down past the definition, past the synonyms, all the way past these topics and other resources, at the bottom, you'll notice I have this translate button, which will take me to a Google Translate window. And I can translate it to any language that I want. Maybe I want to see it in Amharic, in Spanish. So if you ever want to translate a word, here's what you do. Nice work, y'all. Now check out how to log in to Sora.